So, uh, hello everyone, welcome to Brainwaves. Uh, I'm, today I'm going to tell you about CopingTutor.com, which is a new web-based tool to help people with psychosis uh, to learn to use cognitive behavioral therapy type tools to cope with hallucinated voices. Um, I've completed a few of the sessions and have found its ease of use and practical learning value to be very impressive. Um, moreover, its first set of clinical trials has, has shown very promising results uh, indicating that it may indeed help people to a significant degree uh, cope with psychosis and the related anxiety and uh, depression that may come with it. Um, so today I'm going to interview Brian Chico, CEO of its parent company, uh, which is called Cognitive Health Innovations, and uh, also Coping Tutor's lead scientist, Dr. Jennifer Gottlieb. Uh, Jennifer Gottlieb, Ph.D., is a licensed clinical psychologist and a research assistant professor at the Boston University Center for Psychiatric Rehabilitation. She designed and developed the content of the Coping Tutor program and uh, conducted the related research studies. So she's essentially piloting the ship. Um, I'm impressed with three sessions I've completed on Coping Tutor. They've actually been helpful to me. Uh, so Jennifer, thank you for appearing on Brainwaves today. Thanks, Brandon. I'm, um, it's a real pleasure to be here. Good, good, good. Uh, let's talk about how you got involved with Coping Tutor and, and how it works. Okay, sure. Well, I'm a, I'm a research professor and a clinical psychologist, and I've done a lot of work with cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, over the years, um, specifically related to CBT for psychosis, helping people with schizophrenia develop better coping strategies for the problems and the symptoms that they have. And so I've spent a lot of years doing live CBT for psychosis, one-on-one -on -one with, with different clients and group CBT and training people to do CBT for psychosis. And one of the things that I had always recognized as, a, as an obstacle or a problem was that although there's some really good research out there that CBT for psychosis is effective to help people with certain symptoms and problems, unfortunately, particularly in the United States, it's just not widely available. So I wanted to develop a way to kind of bring those CBT skills um, to people who might not normally get to access them or to people who really might not really be interested in traditional clinic-based therapy who might have had bad treatment experiences in the past and just wants to do something a little more private. So as a result, um, I developed the content for the Coping with Voices program specifically. Um, and the Coping with Voices program is a CBT-based program um, that addresses specifically auditory hallucinations or voices. Okay. Uh, and um, how, specifically, how does, how does CBT work? And, and, then the, and then the next question would be, if you want to answer it, uh, following on, mm -hmm. how, does, how does Coping Tutor help people cope specifically with voices? Right. Great question. Thank you. So in general, CBT was developed several years ago to help people with depression and anxiety. And since then, it's been um, adapted and um, researched quite a bit for a variety of different kinds of problems, including in the past 15 to 20 years, psychosis or schizophrenia. Um, and the way it works generally, and then as it specifically applies to schizophrenia, is that it's a very it's a very collaborative intervention between the therapist and the client. It's very skills based and it's very structured. Um, as it applies to schizophrenia and in general too, but specifically for schizophrenia, it's very recovery oriented. So the idea is that. We want to help people build skills to cope better so that they can move forward with their lives and not feel stuck and be able to do the kinds of things that they want to be doing in their lives where the symptoms have sometimes gotten in the way. And so particularly as it pertains to the coping with voices piece, um, the kinds of skills and things that CBT addresses that, are, that I've adapted for this sort of program are um, one really important thing called normalization. And that's where you really help the, the person understand that, you know what, hearing voices is not that off the wall, that it actually happens a lot more frequently than people think, and that studies have been done that show that in the general population, uh, almost 10% of people have reported, yes, I've heard voices before. And so we teach people those kinds of things. In addition, um, a lot of really good skills to, to help with 
the experience of hearing voices. So let me give you an example. Um, let's, what, what often happens is that people have certain goals, like they want to um, socialize more or go back to college because they had to drop out because of a, of a bad hospitalization or something like that. Um, and what they find is that they want to do these things, but they hear voices, and the voices say really horrible things, and then that sort of gets in the way. So if someone wanted to um, go out and, and meet a new friend, the voices might say something like, don't do that, people will harm you if you try to get close to them. Um, and then the person will kind of isolate and decide not to go. Or they want to take a college class, but the voices will say something really awful and not accurate at all, but really awful like, you're too stupid to go to college, you shouldn't do that. And then the person decides not to enroll. And so teaching people skills to really challenge those things that the voices say so that they can come away with a more accurate and healthy um, interpretation of, of themselves and what they're capable of and not, and not put so much attention to the voices. That's, that's kind of the cornerstone of CBT for Voices and, and the games and exercises that I've developed in Coping with Voices address those kinds of skill building sorts of things. Wow, it sounds like it would be really um, direct and to the point in, in terms of helping people deal with the voices that they hear. So, yeah, um, you know, I, I would try to come up with examples that were based on my clinical experience with a lot of the people that I've worked with and the and the things that they came in really bothered with, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that we know mm -hmm. what we know from the research that are really common things that the voices say and how they really tend to get in the way for people and try to create a lot of different scenarios and vignettes mm -hmm. that really illustrated that. So people who were using the program could understand, hey, I'm not alone in all of this, and and yes, these skills are directly applicable to the kinds of things that I'm going through on a day-to-day -day basis. Great, great. So, um, you've tested coping tutor in clinical trials, and I've read, actually read, the results are very promising. You just had a paper published about it? And yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, what specifically did the, re the, the, the results show? Right. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah. So, so uh, the, the first study, the pilot paper, came out actually last week. Um, and, and let me just clarify and say that um, there's only been one small study done at this point on the Coping with Voices program. Um, it's a, it was a pilot study, and it was done in five different mental health clinics, so places where clients usually were going for their care and their services anyway. Um, there were 21 people in the in the study, so it was pretty small, but it, it, what you're saying is is accurate. The, the results were encouraging for this first small trial. Um, and what, what I found, what we found was that people who had used the program after they completed the program um, reported a few really important things. One, um, that they really enjoyed using the program. The vast majority of people who were in the program said they really liked it, that they found it extremely engaging and enjoyable, and that they felt like it really did, in their perception, help them manage their symptoms quite a bit, which was really a good thing because if you're going to develop something like this, you want people to like it, right, and feel connected to it. Um, and then we did more rigorous assessments um, with our trained assessors to get at symptoms and, and different kinds of things like that. And what, what we found um, in our results was that following participation in the Coping with Voices program, the severity of people's voices reduced significantly. So their voices were not quite as severe as they were when they before they started the program, which is great because that's the point, right? Yeah. Um, the other, the other just few really interesting things that, that came about in the results was that um, through our assessments, we, we found that people also um, perceived the negativity in the voices as reduced as well. So the things that the voices were saying felt less negative to them, huh. um, which is really important as well because we want to reduce people's distress that they have about their voices. Um, and, and, and another really interesting thing is that people gain knowledge about CBT in general, CBT for psychosis, and more accurate knowledge about auditory hallucinations, voices, what they were and what they weren't, um, and facts about them, which is also a really nice finding. So certainly, definitely, this was a really encouraging study, and absolutely, you know, to really understand if 
and in what ways coping with voices is, is effective, more rigorous research needs to be done to really be able to determine that. And some of that's underway right now. Great. Well, congratulations on the results so far. That, that's thank fantastic. You. And it sounds really promising. And, uh, thank uh, so, um, so thank you for telling me about, about how Coping Tutor works and uh, sharing your experience with it. And uh, I hope that um, people may have some questions for you online. Uh, okay. Are you ready in, to answer some questions when I post this video? I am. Um, I will be available to answer questions that might come up. Thank you, Jennifer. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It. Thanks, right. Brandon. A pleasure. All right. Thanks for appearing on Brainwaves, and you have a great day. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Take care. Bye. So, Brian, uh, you are a passionate advocate for people with mental illness. You are not only the force behind Coping Tutor, which we're going to talk about today, uh, but also um, before that behind the website schizophrenia.com, which is the world's most popular online resource uh, and a great one at that uh, in terms of accuracy and comprehensiveness um, about the disease schizophrenia. Uh, I really admire what you do with those things. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been a uh, passion and, and area of interest for a long time. I had a brother who had schizophrenia who sadly committed suicide uh, over 10 years ago, but uh, certainly I recognize that this is a, an area that's vastly uh, in need of, 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 of improvement uh, for, for assistance for people who have schizophrenia and their families, and so it's been an area I've, I've put a lot of work into. Great. So, um, well, you've done some very good work. What inspired you to devise Coping Tutor? Well, I, I, you know, it, when I was running schizophrenia.com, um, as a, a, a you know, on a more full-time basis, I read a lot of the research and tracked the research on an on ongoing basis. We had a lot of uh, postdoc students at UCSF and Stanford who were helping and, and reviewing the, the latest research. And one of the pieces of research I came up with or came upon was um, new research that showed that web-based um, training programs that teach people cognitive behavioral therapy techniques could be as effective as face-to-face um, -face, uh, therapy in, in a lot of situations. Uh, the early tests were focused on depression and anxiety and things like that. And um, at schizophrenia.com, we got over 100,000 people every month to the site, but we were providing just information. I thought, wow, wouldn't it be great if we could not only provide information, but provide tools that are clinically tested to, to actually help people and improve their lives uh, around the world who, uh, who, who suffer from schizophrenia. And, and, and it seemed like just a great opportunity to, to really help a lot of people. Excellent, excellent. Um, so in your words, why does it make sense to offer therapy for schizophrenia in an online format instead of in a face-to-face -face format, given that face-to-face -face is already in practice today? Yeah, no, that's a good, great question. Um, you know, they're, they're, what, what uh, we've talked to a lot of uh, uh, clinicians and, and obviously a lot of users who have schizophrenia and uh, done a lot of research. And, and some of the key problems that people face today is that, you know, there's still a huge lack of uh, trained experts in cognitive behavioral therapy around the world and specifically in, in, in schizophrenia uh, related to CBT for schizophrenia or CBT for psychosis. Uh, in the U.S. there are probably on the order of one or two dozen um, uh, trained experts in CBT for psychosis and, and this in a, in, in a nation where there are over two and a half million people with, uh, uh, with um, schizophrenia and, and so you've got a vast a discrepancy between the availability of a of a very well proven treatment. Uh, in fact, uh, CBT for uh, schizophrenia is recommended for a hundred percent of people who have schizophrenia in, in the UK. Uh, you know, in the uh, national health system there, and so it's a, a well recognized, well proven approach. But but very few people have access to it. So the big big issues we saw were access, um, a high price, even if you. Uh, lived in one of the major metropolitan areas like New York or London, uh, and maybe you could get access to one of those few trained experts in CBT for, for psychosis. A lot of people don't have the money to pay 100 or 200 dollars an hour, um, you know, every week or a couple times a week. So you're talking about a cost of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 dollars for a typical program of 10 to 12 to 16 weeks 
for you know learning how to cope with uh, with uh, you know CB, uh, uh, CBT tools for for psychosis or schizophrenia. So even if you have the money, uh, it's hard to find. If you uh, and, and generally it's very hard to get. And then you have issues like traveling and uh, scheduling difficulties. If people have a job, uh, obviously trying to you know integrate therapy into their life is a very time consuming and difficult process. Um, so there's just a lot of barriers. Um, the result is that virtually nobody in the U.S. or North America gets access to CBT for uh, the, you know to the tools and techniques of CBT for schizophrenia. And in, even in the UK where it's, it's recommended for 100% of people and they've got quite a wild, broad body of, of trained experts, less than 10% of people with schizophrenia get access to, um, to the training and the, uh, the therapy approaches of CBT for schizophrenia. So it's a very, uh, it's well proven, but it's a very limited access. And so that's why I think there's a great opportunity for web-based uh, approaches, uh, web and mobile approaches to uh, teaching people how to use these tools and allowing them to practice on a daily basis, 24 hours uh, a day, uh, any day of the week, at home, in the comfort of their home. So uh, when it, it hasn't officially launched, right? Not, not yet. Uh, okay. So we're, we're in the final phases of beta, and, but we anticipate in the next week or two that we'll be opening it up for everybody. Uh, right now you can sign up at the copingtutor.com website uh, to get early access. We're, we're slowly letting more and more people on the site as we scale up and, and test everything, but it's going really well, and we think in the next week or two weeks we'll open it up for everybody. Okay. So when it is actually launched, uh, will there be, uh, I assume people have to pay to use it, is that right? Yes, um, I mean, we are a company, and, and uh, you know, while we um, are a company that's very focused on offering a public benefit for, for all our users and the families related to those users, um, we need to make, uh, get revenue. Uh, the, the model that we're using is, um, uh, it's a, you know, a low cost, as low as cost as we can possibly uh, think we can operate on to allow continued funding for the development and ongoing development of, of uh, this platform or this product as well as related products. And, and so, you know, our goal is to help as many people as possible. Um, we want uh, to charge people uh, a little bit, to, as little as we can, to uh, obviously allow widespread adoption and, and use of the product, but at the same time, we need to make enough money to to pay our rent and, and also to continue to develop the product and improve it. And uh, the feedback, the market research we've done, so it's, it's almost like a, a donation. I mean, uh, the way I think of it is that, that if you like this product and if you're benefiting from it, uh, either you or your family can hopefully uh, find the money to 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 um, to fund it. Um, we uh, we uh, currently uh, have, are planning to charge uh, seventy nine dollars a month. Um, for users, uh, we have special discount programs as people prepay for six months or three months or 12 months, whatever the case may be. Um, the research has shown that the longer you, you, you use the techniques and practice the, the CBT techniques, the greater the benefit. And, and so, so um, we, we're, we're designing the application for people to be able to continue to use their initial sort of educational process of approximately 10 to, to 12 weeks. But then um, ongoing use is going to provide uh, even more benefit, we believe. And, and uh, so we provide an opportunity for people to, uh, to continue to use it. And, and we want to be able to invest and, and develop uh, uh, new, new features and, and new abilities in the product. Um, and, and that's going to be funded by the, uh, the user fees. Okay. So uh, what are your, how can interested people get an account to use Coping Tutor? Well, anybody can sign up right now by going in, going to copingtutor.com, C-O-P-I-N-G-T-U-T-O-R.com. Uh, and there is a large sign-in box right in the uh, front and, and on the webpage, and they just type their, their email address in there. And as soon as we uh, feel uh, systems ready for more people, we'll add more people and invite them into the system. And in a few weeks, we'll have a system open for automatic registration where people can just sign up for a free trial, test things out for a while, and hopefully be convinced of its value and, and uh, help us pay and an ongoing and do ongoing development for the program. All right. Yeah, so, uh, so thank you for telling us about uh, Coping Tutor. And um, uh, I believe people may have some questions for you online when I post this video. Or are you ready to answer some questions when they come in?
Yes, yes, we welcome questions. Uh, feel free. We'll be uh, watching your or ready for questions, uh, I guess, over the next few weeks, and, and we're happy to, to help. And people can always email us uh, uh, at uh, Coping Tutor, uh, support at copingtutor.com if they have questions directly for me later. But we can also, obviously, we'll work directly with you on questions for your website. Okay, excellent. Um, Brandon, thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. And uh, take care, and I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, bye.